Now, earlier this week, I went down to the Hamilton Gallery to take a look around uh, David Sylvian's exhibition and to ask him how he developed an interest in photography. Well, I always uh, had an eye for a good picture in the way that I would do art directions for album covers, for single covers, and, uh, and do layouts for tour programs, things like that. So I had an, an eye. I knew I, w I was capable of, of taking a good picture, but I know the, it, it never interested me in a way of, of going, actually learning the technical details, standing behind a camera and taking the picture. I always just like to arrange things and put things together. This is a similar way as I work in a studio. Really. Um, and I picked up a Polaroid camera in, in Tokyo when Steve was on tour with Yukihiro Takahashi and just started taking Polaroids and didn't think too much about it. And it wasn't until I did the, we did the last Japan tour and I was uh, stuck in hotel rooms a lot of the time and I started messing about with the Polaroids, doing self-portraits, taking pictures from the TV, the view from the window, things like that. And then taking the Polaroids to pieces to see what different effects I could get out of it. So that's how it started. And then, um, obviously, I mean, as I, w as I went on doing it, it progressed into this montage effect, which is really a frustration of trying to get a, a decent um, landscape picture out of a Polaroid camera, which you can't do with a, a single Polaroid. And it was out of the frustration of that, I just started, you know, piecing them all together and, and putting them together to, to, to get a decent picture out of them. What's the process you go through there? How, does, how do you actually build up the montage to make it work? Well, first of all, you just you take a, a whole series of Polaroids off the landscape or the portrait or whatever you're doing. And uh, then you peel the, the white border off from around the Polaroid, and then you peel the, the celluloid away from the backing. And, and sometimes the, the, the image will stick to the backing, sometimes it will stick to the celluloid. Um, if it sticks half and half, you put it back together again, and you get quite interesting white lines running through the picture. And then you try and put the thing together, which is a little bit difficult sometimes because the perspective al always comes out as a like a fisheye lens on, on a camera. There are other people taking this type of picture, building up these type of montage. You know what I'm going to say now, don't yeah, you? I mean, yeah. David Hockney, people, yeah. people have, have compared your work to it yes. already. Uh, how do you cope with that? Well, first of all, I think it's a compliment that I should be compared to, to Hockney. Um, I wasn't aware of Hockney when I started, which was at the end of 82. I'm not, I, I'm not sure... I don't think he had exhibited his work in this country at that time. I hadn't seen any printed, so for me it was a, 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 a process of self of, of, yeah, self discovery, finding out for myself what was good, what I could do, and it was very interesting to see that he had done something very similar. It was quite frustrating in a way that he, he showed it to the public first, don't he? but it, and nevertheless, I, I take it as a compliment. I think it's good to see that you are being taken ser seriously enough to compare with Hockney, if you like. But it must be said, it's obviously easier for David Sylvian to get uh, an, an exhibition of his work than it is for, say, another young photographer. Oh, that's true. I was very wary of, of, of approaching a gallery to, to, to have an exhibition, because I'm aware of, like, uh, jumping the queue, if you like. A lot of young people have to make a living out of it. I don't have to make a living out of it. So, uh, I, I, in a way, I would feel very guilty if I didn't feel I'd produce something of some value. It's the pros and cons, I suppose, of your position, isn't it, really? I mean, this, this gallery is bound to be full of people coming to see... I mean, in fact, I've just had to fight my way through lots of people outside right now. But I wonder, does it get very tiring for you to be in that situation where you're constantly, um, constantly being observed, if you like? Well, obviously, in this situation, I'm aware that it's going to happen, and I'm prepared for it. Um, yes, it does, if it extends to your private life. It does, in a way that I'm very conscious too self-conscious of walking around the streets because I live in the centre of London and it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, which is why I tend to travel a lot into, into countries that I'm not very well known in and, and I have a lot more freedom there. In London, as I said before, I don't tend to go out that much. I don't think it's really because of that, the fact that there are people out there. Um, it's, it, it's just my nature. I've, been, I've always been that way. What about this one then? It's Holger Zhukai, isn't it? In, in Berlin. In Berlin. This is when we're recording the album. That's the entrance to the, the studios, Hans Sutton Studios. Now that's an interesting effect because what you've actually got there is the montage of the of the Polaroids, with also sketching as well. Yes, yeah, in pastels. And why why that? Um, partly because a lot of the Polaroids I took around this around this picture didn't work out. I mean, I couldn't get the perspective right. It wouldn't fit. So I tried actually filling it in with with the drawing, and it. I tried it once before, actually, with a picture of Yucca, and it worked so well, I thought I'd try it again, and it worked even better on this one. 
Now, Hogan's a good thing working with you, hasn't he, on this, on this new album? Yeah. Playing dictaphone. I mean, I, I couldn't really get him when he was on the programme very recently to explain exactly how this works. Well, it's a bit difficult <laughs> to explain, actually. He, he, he has a, a dictaphone, and on the tapes on the dictaphone, he has...